After studying a lot of different genres in music, traveling all over the world and creating music all over the world, she has come to Eurovision for Greece. Marina Sati, how are you doing? Hello, hello everyone. I'm good. Uh, it's a very nice and interesting experience, actually. What is so interesting about it for you? Uh, you know, everything in the beginning, when I you know, decided to do this project with your vision, felt very big and scary and intimidating. But through, throughout the whole process, like the past six months, it hasn't been... To the contrary, it has been very fun, very creative. I've learned so many things. I feel that for the first time in my life, I have achieved so many things in such a small period of time. I was always, every time I had to take a decision, I had to like think and think again and sleep with it. And and now we didn't have the time with so many deadlines that were there, you know? So I, I just learned that the first instinct is the is the correct one you know and also these two weeks here feels familiar it it reminds me of all these festivals when we travel around and we stay with the same with the bands in the same hotel and we talk and then we we play music i don't feel like this competition at all to the contrary like we hang out with um the singers and the bands from all the countries we talk it's very i don't know it's I think it's what music is supposed to be uh, like, right? And for to share, to communicate, to learn, to have fun, to sing for the others and to listen the others singing and performing. So I'm very, very glad that I, I'm doing this, actually. Yeah, I can imagine. And of course, you have studied opera, jazz, all these different styles. Yeah. Um, has, that inf has that helped when you were creating the song and creating the performance and everything, knowing of these different musical styles? Look, I think and I believe that everything... You're so sweet. You're so sweet. Like, your energy is so sweet. Anyway, I'm, I was saying that everything you do or you see or you learn in your life makes you who you are. It's impossible to not have this and carry this with you. So for me, yes, as you said, I star started studying uh, classical music when I was five, piano actually. And then I was doing choir, uh, theory, harmony, counterpoint. Then I took my degree in like classical singing. I wanted to be a, an opera singer. Uh, but then I studied jazz. You know, actually, I went. Um, I went to a. It was a EBU project also, a European European Jazz Youth Orchestra, like a big band. And there were two singers, me, and another uh, singer from Rotterdam. Oh, nice. Um, Maike Dendunen. Oh, we're gonna go. We're Amaz gonna go find out. Amazing jazz singer, amazing improv at improvising and scatting. Oh my god! Uh, and this experience in the jazz band, it was the first time that I came together with people from other countries, musicians. The first time, like I, I left Greece to do something, you know, related to music, and that was my inspira What inspired me? And I got the scholarship from uh, Berkeley College in America, and I went there to study. And then that was a dream, like multicultural environment, friends from all over the world, playing music all day, sharing, having people that have the same passion and craziness with you 24-7, like for three years, you know. So this influenced me a lot. And, you know, when I finished the university at some point, it was the crisis in Greece, also, I guess, like a personal crisis. It was the age where I was like, who the fuck am I? Wait, wait, was that bad? Is it? Okay. Since it's okay. Who am I? Uh, you know, who am I really? I've done and I've tried so many things. I, I studied architecture, I forgot to tell you, and theater. So I was like, I have to, to put all these things down and try to make sense out of it you know my dad is from Sudan but I grew up in Greece and like I had like so many different images and sounds and so that's how basically my personal musical journey started and what I also feel from you when we've looked at your work and we look at the v music video that you've created and we've seen yeah. the we've also seen the rehearsal video now of you on stage 
there's an element of play. You're playing with stereotypes in your 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 music video. You're playing with the audience and the the people at home and the camera very much. And this. Yeah. That you also feel very playful in that sense. Was that deliberate to put that in every aspect of of, of Zari in, in what we see? Look, it's definitely something that I have in mind every time I'm I'm making something that I wanted to feel real and authentic, and I wanted to be like from person, like from human to human. Many times it's hard because you know when you like fix your hair, fix your makeup, wear your clothes, do like polished music videos sometimes it's easy to lose this more like personal thing so i really wanted for the music video but also for the song and also for the act to have things that are like more authentic to the greek life that i've lived going to feasts going to celebrations going to like sunday gatherings with the family having music or to weddings you know having music dancing singing eating So I wanted this vibe in the song and in the act. But also like we're modern people, Europeans, 2024, we grew up with MTV, YouTube, the internet, fashion. Um, so also that is part of who I am, but also part of who most of the people in my generation are in Greece. So uh, I don't know if you know, but our act on stage is going to be like a one shot. Yeah. So it's, it's constant. It's constant eye contact with the people at home. Exactly. Which is it it, it is tricky because basically you can't hide, but that's for me what is the, the I don't know, what at least moves me that you don't hide. Everything happens in front of the eyes of the people. There's no time not to rest, but you know they they follow you through this journey metaphorically but also literally they see you you're seen and th there's some sort of like transparency and honesty that i really like in this idea and concept we don't have props we don't have like set design we don't have anything it's just like us walking our our path you know and being seen so i don't know i really like this idea Yeah, we liked what we saw as well, and we also oh, Look. no. I really liked it. It was like it's really what we took from it because we saw it yesterday and we discussed it on the podcast. Was really it? It really is an intense. You're connecting at home, and it really is just that transparency of this is happening now. There's n and it feels sometimes like it's not even um, thought about that. It's very natural and happening at that moment. So I think that's really a, a positive thing. Look, uh, me, to be honest, I want to be honest. Um, I think that, well, it was a rehearsal. It's not the show, and that's what our rehearsals are for. We had some things to fix. Also, based on yesterday, I had some, like, slippering with the shoes. But, but again, that's it. That's what it was, and people can even see these things, like the either the, the difficulties or, like, the uh, accidents that could happen. That's part of the concept. And also, you know, I don't know if you noticed, like, the other side... Like that, the cameraman and the camera is part of the actual choreography. So it's not like the whole thing on stage is basically like a live performance with a live cam. It's exactly, it's a duet. So, like, it's interesting because every single uh, take of the three rehearsals that I did, the, we did yesterday, were different because also the other partner is human so you know it's it's uh, it's tricky but for me it's also magic and there is one key element missing still that magical audience next week yes, yes, you're right. how are you preparing for the energy of everyone in there because everyone i'm a dj as well in amsterdam i've played your song to people who are not eurovision fans and they immediately on a dance floor they connect to it so yeah. that that's what happens when you're someplace so that will happen when you get to that jury show okay. are you kind of ready for that wall of energy to be added to the performance of zari you know this whole performance is made for the camera um so I don't know how actually this is gonna. It's definitely gonna change our energy, like having and feeling the people ar around us. Because we'll also see them always in the background, of course. Well, I'm happy that you said that they like the song because 
you know, it's a song that is in Greek, Greek language, a language that is not so, people are not so familiar with. So for me, it's like, even like, I feel even more like honored and proud that people can connect and dance to despite the language barrier, which for me is not a barrier. Like if you listen to the beat and it's like badass and you want to dance and the zurna, like the traditional yep. instrument that is that's all it needs. I don't know. <laughs> Two final questions before I let you go. The first one is that uh, we do a lot of different podcasts. We do a lot of cultural stuff. And of course, you have also done a lot of stuff with opera. How important do you find opera for uh, to be accessible for young people? And why should young people go and see more opera? I mean, look, I haven't done it since I was like 21 when I start, when I like I finished my studies. But me, I like I go, I watch, I watch like theatrical plays and operas. I mean, look. Some people say that opera is something like old fashioned, something from the old times that it's something that is more like, how can I say, hypervatico? Almost me metaphysical. I don't know the word in English, but almost the size of it, the orchestra, it's not something like casual, small, and realistic. It's almost like, I don't know if you've seen like ancient tragedies, especially if you go to Greece. In Greek theaters, like ancient theaters, there's like a very big size, almost like godlike, you know. Mm -hmm. So for me, like to be able to to see um, th plays or like opera or like feel this size of the orchestra and the music and the um, how can I say like the vibrations is something that is definitely, you know, it doesn't have to do with. 2024, 2000, 1950s is something, it's like an experience. So for sure, it's not something still relevant in my opinion. Final question. We are going to be in the audience for a couple of the shows standing. So I need some tips because oh, I have okay. it. Yes. And of course, you will also have it in the performance. Yes. But what is the trick to doing it perfectly with like, is it the elbow? Is it what is how do you make that move perfectly? Because we're going to be in the audience because we need to ha help everyone train so, it. First of all, this is like a silk scarf that that we made. It's from the shoot of the music video that we did in Acropolis. And it's uh, because it's a little bit big. I think it's it's really hard to do like this. So I would this size of scarf, I would hold it from the middle. And you go, and if you want to like hold your other hand like this that we usually do in the islands. So it's mostly in the it's mostly in the wrist. Yes. It's not so much in the elbow. No, no, no. It's just in the wrist. And you spin it, and you can do turns with your body or any like footwork that we have. <laughs> so we'll definitely be doing that in the audience, cheering you on yeah. for Greece when you're bringing all that energy to that stage. Yeah. And we wish you so much joy, yes, so much you. happiness, and we can't wait to shake our booty. Yes, Let's me too, that. actually. <laughs> thank you very, very much. Marina, thank you so much. Thank you.